Hi, this is Lenny Liebman of Black Hat, and I'm speaking today with Ryan Perma, who is founder and chief scientist at Silence. Ryan, it's good to see you. Thank you. It's great to see you as well. So the first thing I just want to ask you is, would it be fair to say that we're facing not only an increasing intensity of attacks, but also those attacks, if they're successful, have greater business consequences for us than ever? So uh, over the last several years, uh, attacks have become much more uh, public. Uh, and because of that, we've seen a lot more uh, involvement in board level uh, and uh, uh, even in the media. Mm -hmm. uh, so re the reputational damage of an attack can be significant. We've seen uh, everything from state actors to, uh, uh, to, to crimeware continue to increase in both frequency and, and potential damage. Uh, everything from leaking uh, email spools to, uh, to WikiLeaks to uh, stopping your business through ransomware has been kind of popping up. Um, as more companies start to realize this, they're seeing a significant uptick in uh, the what must be done about cybersecurity. It's moved from sort of a, a back office technical discussion to a, a real world business continuity and, uh, and risk uh, calculation. And it, that affects both Fortune 500s down to mom and pop shops. Uh, the, the threats are real and they can actually do a significant amount to, to take your business offline. Um, there's also, I think, a sense out there that attackers are getting increasingly sophisticated, again, whether they're state actors or whether they're criminals. So, uh, in some ways, yes. Uh, oftentimes we see uh, uh, new attacks popping up on a daily basis uh, that, that show a, a, an interesting new facet, something that you've never seen before. But the reality is, is that it's really expensive for an attacker to invent true new ways of being a bad guy. Uh, and so the vast majority of attacks, while they have one or two interesting new facets, fundamentally uh, still use a lot of the same tactics and techniques. For example, uh, uh, if you take the, 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 the WannaCry attacks, it had a brand new uh, uh, Disclose Zero Day, and it used a worm-like mechanic. Both of those are pretty interesting and unique in the concept of ransomware, but the ransomware portion was pretty standard uh, uh, offering. And so the, the vast majority of uh, the code could have been from any other piece of uh, ransomware out there. Yeah, that's an interesting take that despite sort of this veneer of increasing sophistication, somewhere at the heart of these attacks is some commonality. Yeah, absolutely. What we see is uh, it's, it's really hard to invent uh, new ways to being bad. Nonetheless, I think there's a sense among some InfoSec teams that because we're facing at least a greater volume of threat and greater variety of threat, that we've kind of seeded the ground in terms of prevention and that increasingly we have to focus on intervention after there's a breach to keep an attack from moving laterally and getting to our crown jewels. How do you feel about that narrative? So prior to starting Silence, I spent a, a, a long time at a very large antivirus company and every year we'd get the, the drumbeat of AV is dead. Uh, and the, the reality is, is that a lot of our approaches have lost efficacy over the years. But to that point, taking a quote from uh, Ben Franklin, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Uh, it's very important for us to consider things like forensics uh, and, and incident response, but those can't be our frontline defenses. What we found is that uh, it's not that prevention is impossible, but the tactics that we used for, uh, for approaching prevention fundamentally were not scalable and, and were easily gameable by the attackers. And so we really uh, had to consider different approaches to prevention. I think there's also a sense that we're somewhat under-resourced, not even from a technical point of view, but just in terms of human capital, number of bodies and skill sets among the people who are on our teams. Yeah, I, I hear this often when talking with CISOs, it's really hard to find people. Uh, I, I read an article uh, a couple months ago saying that we're at a negative 200% uh, uh, unemployment rate in, in uh, security right now, that there's two jobs effectively for every uh, open potential candidate. Now, this is a problem with training, but even if we train a bunch of people today, they're coming out very green. And a lot of the, ta a, a lot of the positions that we have right now are really focused on very strong technical skill sets that, that develop over time. Uh, you have to be tested by fire before you can get there. 
Um, what we're seeing is that to scale this problem, we can't make it a human-only problem. We're going to need the right kind of tools and the right kind of technologies, and yes, the right types of processes to, to keep us uh, ahead of the game, because this isn't a, a, a problem where we can just throw people at it and make it go away. So tell me a little bit about how silence then addresses this issue of sort of increasing attacks, limited head count, and potentially really bad consequences. Yeah, absolutely. So silence takes a pretty different uh, viewpoint here. What, what we found was that uh, internally we have a concept uh, uh, around let machines do what machines do well and let humans do what humans do well. What we found is that you can't get enough people to, to fundamentally solve this problem. And so we took a very different approach, a data science approach, to, uh, uh, to solving this. By training machines, you can, you can allow them to, to take a lot of the load off of uh, the humans uh, in, in areas of malware protection, anti-exploitation, and even behavioral and, and, and incident response. The more you can offload on your humans, the more humans can focus on those really, truly unique threats that, that the cleverness that humans uh, bring to the game really starts to, to make the difference. There's a lot of talk in the industry, though, about sort of AI and machine learning. So maybe you want to tell me a little bit about how uh, Silence sort of differentiates its approach to the application of AI and machine learning to the challenge. AI and ML are transformative technologies right now, and, and they're, they're being seen across the board, not just in security, but uh, all, all over the place. That being said, uh, it's the approach that you take that really differentiates. Uh, AI and ML, you can go out today and, and download a toolkit and uh, add, add some AI to your product. And for simple problems, that might be enough. Once you start to get to some of the complex problems that, that security practitioners uh, deal with on a daily basis, you really do need to have real data scientists solving real data science problems. Mm -hmm. And that's really the fundamental difference is that machine learning and artificial intelligence are our platform. They're, they're the approach on how we solve problems rather than a Band-Aid that we slap on top of potentially failing products to, to try and uh, give them a new shiny uh, 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 veneer. Yeah, so I think what you're saying is that there's a difference between applying um, commodity machine learning algorithms to security and actually building something that's natively uh, designed specifically purpose-built for the kind of problems we face. Uh, absolutely. Real, real machine learning requires a combination of uh, world-class data scientists, uh, subject matter experts that, that truly understand the problems that they're trying to solve, and then uh, fantastic engineering to, to make it effective. Uh, and, and without all three of those, you're, you're going to face some, some pretty significant uh, challenges in solving problems using uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence. So if someone's listening to this and they find what you're saying somewhat compelling in terms of value and, and possibility of reducing their risk, uh, what would you suggest as a next step? Well, uh, we're going to be at, uh, uh, at Black Hat, where we show real-world attacks happening uh, on a daily basis and show how uh, the concept of a, a predictive advantage um, using AI and ML to, to get in front of attackers, to understand those patterns of badness, um, can, can really fundamentally change the game. Um, we'll be performing it at Black Hat as well as all, all around the country. Just check our website and, and find out the date and the time that's, that's close to you. And if I'm not going to be at the show, and if I don't want to wait around for the roadshow to come to me, you have some kind of assessment you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, reach out to us through our website, uh, and we, we can perform uh, what we call a compromise assessment that, that allows us to leverage our technology to, to, to smoke test your network in a very lightweight way to understand if, if there's a, a reason for you to be worried. Great. Ryan, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Lenny Liebman of Black Hat here with Ryan Perma of Silence. Thanks for watching.